Hello and thank you for joining me again at Completing Christ. We continue to walk through the book of Colossians. We made it down to chapter 2, uh, verse 8. And last time we talked about this warning that Paul's, Paul issues the saints at the church at Colossae. And he talks about uh, being taken captive or being robbed, as uh, Spiro Zodiati says. It, you know, they rob you of what you're looking for, the riches that are available in Jesus when you believe a lie over the truth. And we talked about two things that he mentioned in the first part of the verse last time, that, so where he says, let no one take you captive through philosophy and empty deceit. And we talked about what that means. And we're going to go on and finish, uh, finish out this verse, talk a little bit more about this verse. And it says, according to the tradition of men, and the elementary principles of the world rather than according to Christ. You hear what he's saying? He says, look, man, don't, don't, let, don't let anyone take you captive. Don't believe a lie over the truth because it really is Jesus. And if you believe a lie over the truth, you're going to miss what Jesus has for you. And he uses a term here that, to me, has always caught my attention. And he says the traditions of men. What is that? What is that actually talking about? You realize that, that oftentimes that we're robbed of what we're really looking for because we believe traditions over really the truth. Now, look, I, I'm not against traditions. I just want to know why we do what we do. You know, the word tradition there, it's where it says traditions of men, comes from a phrase that, man, that means it's man-made. Man, man excuse me. It's man-made. It's a man-made custom or a man-made habit. It's something that we do because it's what we have done. You know, and uh, I've asked that question a lot over the years, is that why do we do what we do? You know, again, I'm not against tradition, but I have rather be, I'd rather be biblical than traditional. And man, look, I, I'm a Southern guy. I was raised, I was raised in the South. And I can tell you when I moved out West, my eyes were open to the fact that a lot of things that we do, uh, we do because it's the way that we've always, that we've always done it. And again, I've always been one to ask that question. Tell me why we do it this way and most of the time people can't tell you most of the time it's because that's the way that we've always done it and just because that's the all the way we've always done it does not mean that it's right look I, what i want to do i want to be used to reach the most people that we possibly can with the gospel to make disciples of of all nations the best that i possibly can be used to make to to do that empowered by the presence of God and I don't be I want I don't want to be robbed of what Jesus has for me. And that's why that's why we're looking at this. That's why we're walking through this. Well, what what are some of the things that in our culture that we have kind of come up with that uh, that probably have become sacred cows that may be robbing us of the very thing that we're looking for. You know, I, I thought about I thought about several and things that I've dealt with in, in ministry over the years. You know, so tell me why we do things the way that we do it. Uh, tr church traditions. All right, what about the the time that we meet? I want you to think about that. Is there anywhere in Scripture that sets aside the specific time that we're supposed to meet. No, it, it's not. You know, look, I'm all about gathering with other believers and worshiping and, and meeting with other believers, but the specific time in which we're to do that is not outlined in Scripture. Yes, we're told that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And I can tell you it's been a whole lot of controversy, a whole lot of tension over the time in which we meet. You know, I've been told before that we meet at 11 o'clock and that's when I'm going to come. You know, But why do we meet at 11 o'clock? I'm going to tell you a story that a guy told me one time in this culture as why we meet at 11 o'clock. Now look, I, I don't have proof of this. I trust the guy. Uh, I trusted him when he told me he's going to be with the Lord now. He said, the reason that we meet at 11 o'clock at our church is because when we first started, we had a lot of dairy farmers. And that gave them time to milk their cows and get there at 11 o'clock. Now look, I'm not against meeting at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. But if we can reach more people 
at 10 o'clock, shouldn't we at least look at that? See, because we meet at a certain time because that's the way that we've always done it. You know, the, the way that we dress. You know, I believe we all dress modest. I believe we all dress nice. But I believe that people ought to feel feel welcome to come if they cannot afford to dress the way other people dress. Man, look, I was born uh, born and raised in the South and understood that on Sundays what you was going to do is you was going to dress up. When I started preaching, I wore, I wore a suit and tie. I did for years. Then I moved out West. And I moved out West and I began to realize nobody had on a tie. All right? Then I go to other countries and I began to realize a lot of those guys didn't even own a tie. They didn't have the money to buy one. You know, so why do we dress the way we do? A lot of it has to do with tradition. It has to do with our culture you know and if i'm if i'm dressed way different than everybody else is that going to make people feel uncomfortable around me again i'm not against tradition i just want to know why we've done what we've done and have we made a sacred cow out of the fact of the way that we are we think we're supposed to dress in southern culture on sunday morning you know also i i thought about the order of service the way that we do things and look i'm all about structure i'm a pretty structured guy and and i like to get in a i like to get in a routine but but would it be okay if we changed up the order in which we did our service on Sunday morning. Say, 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 for instance, that we come in and we sing, we sing two or three songs, and the guy preaches, and then we come back and we sing three or four songs again, and we have a great, we have a great worship time after the message. Is there anything biblically wrong with that? No, no. The way we do our services basically is based on the fact is that's the way we've always done it. That's a tradition of man that we just need to take a look at. You know, the time that, the time that we finish. You know, in our culture, we're accustomed to if we start at 10, we need to be through by 11. Is that biblical? I can tell you, no, it's not. I can remember one time I was preaching in another country and, uh, before I got up to preach, they sang for two and a half hours before I preached. They wanted me to preach about an hour, an hour and a half, and then they were going, they were going to sing some more. Why? That's their custom. That's what they normally do. You see, it's okay to do things in a different way than the way we've always done it before. And I think that's one of the things that we're learning in our culture is that sometimes we have to take a look at why we do things the way that we do, and oftentimes what we would have to say is the tradition of men is not the best possible way to reach to to reach people with the gospel and really to disciple people. You know, I know I'm uh, in a lot of different churches that do do things a lot of different ways. And one of the things I've noticed in some of those churches is that they've gone away from a Sunday night service. And I've heard people really attack them for doing, for doing that. But what they've gone to is a small group or D group meetings on Sunday night where they are really getting in the Word, discipling people who've been in the rhythm through the course of the week, reading scripture, journeying, 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 journaling scripture, writing down key things that the Lord has spoken to them that week, bringing that to the table, holding one, one another accountable to doing it, walking through the word together, memorizing scripture together, and doing life together. And they got more people involved in that, going deeper in the word than they ever had when they had a worship service. Now, I know some people that would disagree with that, but I want to do what's most effective for the kingdom, reaching people and growing people and truly making disciples. Maybe we just need to take a look at our traditions. And are they man-made or they're passed down through Scripture? You know, and if I'm caught up in man-made traditions, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to me. I'm going to be robbed of the very thing I'm looking for. Look, I'm looking for Jesus. I'm looking for intimacy with Jesus. I'm looking for the Jesus that saved me to radically change my life and make me more like him than I ever thought I possibly could be and to use me to make the greatest impact in this culture in which he's placed me until the ends of the earth, until he calls me home. And in doing that, I have to take a look at why I do things the way that I do it. I ask you to do the same thing take a look don't be deceived don't be don't buy in 
to a lie that we've got to do things the way we've always done it. What we need to do is be used by God to make a difference in our culture. I pray you have a blessed day. Take a look at your traditions. Are they biblical? Or are they man-made? And let Jesus be Jesus in you today as he uses you to have a radical impact in the culture in which he's placed you. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much for watching Complete in Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.